Speaker, and I'm pleased now to, uh, uh, to give our colleague, the author of the bill, recognize the gentleman from that state up north, uh, Mr. Wahlberg, for three and a half minutes. The gentleman is recognized for two and a half minutes, three minutes. I thank uh, my Buckeye colleague, and thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of my bill, H.R. 4468, Choice in Automobile Retail Sales or the CARS Act. In April, the Biden administration, EPA, opposed a rule setting light and medium duty vehicle tailpipe emission standards so stringently, EPA expects the proposed, EPA expects, let me say that again, EPA expects the proposal would force two thirds of new light and medium duty vehicles sold in 2032 to be electric. There's no hiding. The proposed rule is an electric vehicle mandate. Not only does this EV mandate display breathtaking government overreach into the auto industry, but it's also unaffordable, unattainable, and unrealistic for American consumers. EVs are $13,000 more expensive than the average gas fuel vehicle. Repairs to an EV cost $2,300 more on average, leading to higher insurance costs over $500 annually. The proposed standards are also unattainable. Our grid cannot handle power over overload that's required. Plus, most of the country lacks the charging infrastructure needed for the mandate. We also don't have access to all the critical minerals to produce the vehicles or the capacity to refine those minerals for use in batteries. China controls most critical mineral mines, processing, and manufacturing for EVs. China has 78% of the world's cell manufacturing capacity for EV batteries. Have we already forgotten the disastrous realities of over-reliance on China for our supply chain? I have yet to hear a constituent say to me, we need our supply chains to be more reliant on China. Opponents of the CARS Act argue that EVs are growing in popularity and prices are dropping. If that's the case, why is the mandate necessary? Well, just last week, nearly 4,000 car dealers sent a letter to the administration pleading with them to pump the brakes on the proposed rule, citing lack of demand. Range of EVs is another concern. Currently, one charge couldn't even get me across my district. EVs have almost 80% more issues and are less reliable than other vehicles. Let me be clear. I'm not against EVs. I'm against EV mandates. A single EV battery requires mining of hundreds of thousands of pounds of minerals. Those minerals are then refined using energy from China's coal plants. Ironically, an EV mandate is not a silver bullet to reduce global emissions. Sadly, the biggest loser for this mandate me, may be the American auto worker, since significantly less labor is required to assemble EVs. The future of those working at engine plants, like the one in my district, are now in peril too. The administration should side with consumers and innovators, not pick winners and losers. EV will play a significant role in the future of the industry. But so should hybrids and other solutions as they become more functional, reliable, and affordable, and chosen by the consumer. Let's allow consumers to have access to affordable and reliable cars, encourage American innovation, and set up to prevail over China. And I yield back. Gentleman from Ohio yields. The gentleman.